Good morning boys and girls and welcome to our second lockdown assembly. Also a good morning and welcome to all our friends and family who have tuned in today as well. It's absolutely fantastic to have you here again today. Well that has been a full week that has passed since our last assembly, a full seven days. And the brilliant news about that is, is that means that it is a full seven days closer to us all being back together again. Boys and girls, there's two things that I would really like you to know this week. The first one is that teaching you and working with you is way more than, than a job to us. You guys are part of our life and we miss you, we care about you, we worry about you and we love it that we get to be a part of your life. And what I really need you to know today is that all of that kindness, all of that care, all of that worry, all of that love doesn't just disappear because our school building is closed. It is still there. It's very spread out right now. It's spread out across the whole of Lawrence Kirk, but it is still there. I can feel it. And if you stop for a moment and you close your eyes and you really, really think about it, you'll be able to feel it too. The second thing that I would like you to know today is that it is you that we miss, boys and girls. Our amazing teachers, our fantastic PSAs are doing a brilliant job within your digital classrooms right now. But what they want to hear from more than anything is you. Even if you haven't done a job from the digital classroom, just reach out, go on there, say hi. They're not worried that you have, if you haven't done a job, they just want to hear from you because it's you that they miss. It's song time, boys and girls. The song I have chosen for this week is another personal favourite of mine. I'm going to give you a couple of wee clues to see if you can figure out for yourselves exactly which song it is that I've chosen. So, here goes. Hmm? Any ideas? Watch again. Shout it out. Which song is it? You're at home, you're not in the assembly hall, so you can shout out as loud as you like. Every word you say Build up one another, build up 
I have a glass of water here, boys and girls, and if I hold this glass of water like this in front of me for a minute or two, it doesn't feel too heavy at all. It's really, really easy to hold. However, if I try to hold on to it for, say, an hour, my arm would start to get a bit sore. I would find it much harder to hold, even though the weight of the water is still the very same. It's getting harder to hold. And well, if I was to try to hold it like this for a whole day, a whole 24 hours, my whole arm would become numb. My arm wouldn't work properly at all. It would be very, very sore and hard to do anything. I would really need to put the glass down. Boys and girls, our worries are a little bit like this glass of water. If we keep them there with us just for a minute or two, it's okay. It doesn't make too much of a difference. But if we hold on to them for an hour and another hour and we hold on to them all day, it stops us being able to do things, being able to do things that we really enjoy. And sometimes we have to learn just to put our worries down. I have a story that I would like to share with you today all about a little girl called Ruby and she's a very clever girl because she finds out exactly what it is that you need to do when you have a worry. Ruby Finds a Worry by Tom Percival Ruby loved being Ruby. She loved to swing up high and she loved to explore wild and faraway places. Sometimes she even went to the bottom of the garden and Ruby was perfectly happy until one day she discovered a worry. It wasn't a very big worry. In fact, it was so small that at first Ruby hardly noticed it at all, but then the worry started to grow. Every day it got a little bit bigger. It just wouldn't leave her alone. It was there at breakfast, staring at her over the cereal box, and it was still there at night when she brushed her teeth. The funny thing was that no one else could see Ruby's worry, not even her teacher. So Ruby pretended that she couldn't see it either. She tried to carry on as if everything was normal, but it just wasn't. The worry was always there, stopping her doing the things she loved. Ruby worried the worry would never go away. What if it didn't? What if it stayed with her forever? Ruby didn't realise it, but she was doing the worst thing you could ever do with a worry. She was worrying about it. Now, the worry was enormous. It could barely fit in the kitchen at dinner time. It filled up half the school bus. And it took up the whole cinema. The worry became the only thing that Ruby could think about and it seemed like she would never feel happy again. Then one day, something unexpected happened. Ruby noticed a boy sitting alone in the park. He looked like she felt. He looked sad. And then she noticed something else next to him. Could it be a worry? It was. Ruby realised she wasn't the only person with a worry after all. Other people had them too. And she asked the boy what was on his mind. And as he told her, the strangest thing happened. His worry began to shrink. Then Ruby did the best thing that you can ever do with a worry. 
she talked about it. And as the words tumbled out, Ruby's worry began to shrink until it was barely there at all. Soon both of their worries were gone and finally Ruby felt like herself again. Of course, that wasn't the last time that she ever had a worry. I mean, everybody gets them from time to time. But now that she knew how to get rid of a worry, they never hung around for very long. Ruby learned something very, very important in that story. She learned that when you have a worry, when you have something on your mind, or something just doesn't feel quite right, that something that you absolutely have to do is you have to talk about it with somebody. That might be your mum, your dad, your granny, it might be your friends, but that it's really important when you're feeling like that to talk to somebody because there's an old saying that a problem shared is a problem halved and that is really true, boys and girls. Something else that you can do when you're feeling worried is you can do something that's going to distract you, something that you know you enjoy that's going to take your mind off of the thing that you're worrying about. So I don't know what that would be for you. Perhaps it might be playing keepy ups in the garden. It might be doing something crafty, colouring in, drawing. It might be reading a book. It might be phoning a friend. I don't know. But the key is, is to think about your own self and think about what is it that I could do when I'm feeling worried that would help distract me and help take my mind off things. Another thing that you can do is you can think about a place in your house or maybe in your garden where you can go to that makes you feel calm, that you find quite peaceful and you find quite relaxing and that you can take yourself there when you're feeling a bit worried. Now I've got a place like this in my house. Well it's actually not in my house, it's in my garden and I would like to take you all there today. I would like to take you to my happy place. So. Come with me, boys and girls. We'll go there now and finish assembly there. So here we are, boys and girls. Welcome to my summer house. I absolutely love it out here. And this is the perfect place for me to tell you all about this week's house challenge. Now, last week, I asked you all to have a wee think about something small, something little that you could do at home that would really, really help somebody that you're staying safe at home with at the moment. And this week's house challenge is linked into what we've been talking about um, in assembly today. So thinking about worry and how to deal with worries and how to deal with things when we're feeling anxious. So this week, I would like you to think about something that you think is helpful to do when you're feeling a little bit worried and share that because you never know boys and girls you sharing that information within your digital classrooms might give an idea for somebody else that they could use next time they're feeling worried so that could be a really nice and helpful thing to do so this week's house challenge have a think about something that you can do to distract yourself when you're feeling worried so that's us finished our second lockdown assembly. Do you know, I like it in here so much. It makes me feel so calm, so peaceful. It's very quiet in here. I can hear the birds outside in the trees. I think I might make this my office next week. I think that might help me be very productive. So a very wee sign, Mrs. Smith's office. Very important work, do not disturb, thank you. And I'm going to put this on the door, so I'm going to work in my happy place this week. I can't wait, I'm really excited about that. Boys and girls, thank you so much for tuning in to Assembly, and I will see you all again next week. Bye!